Mon cross. Quite different to what one would have expected. Yes. When we think we know so much, we realize we know so little. Yeah. And it's not until you have come here that you realize how very little one really did know. In spite of years of experience and study of the subject. And as for the mechanics of communication, well, these are extremely baffling. And even those who are scientifically minded and inclined, I'm sure at times are very puzzled. And as for science on your side, finding a method of communication without the aid of mediums, I think it is extremely unlikely, extremely remote. I think somehow, somewhere, the medium as we know it must play a part. Science may invent instruments of kind which will no doubt eventually produce evidence of a kind that will convince science and the world generally. But I think there will always be the need and have to be the aid of mediums of some type or description. Of course, there's no doubt about it that in the future, physical mediumship will play a very, very important part. At the moment, it seems to have fallen into the background. Seems to be very few physical mediums. And yet I am convinced it will be through the agency of physical mediumship, scientifically tested and approved under certain conditions, which science will bring about that we shall have the full realization of the world as to the truth of this great subject. Science will find its own way and develop its own methods. But I am convinced that mediumship as we know it will still play a very important part. I'm sure that without the agency of psychic force and power, generated by mediums and utilized by us, this is the only way, though it may be more scientific in its method and approach, we shall still need mediums. I had many experiences, many mediums, many so satisfactory, and many disappointing. Nevertheless, it is only by constant inquiry, constant sittings under all kinds of conditions to come to the full realization of the truth of survival. You, I know, are experimenting and have been for a very, very long time with a great deal of success. But putting, as it were, your findings over to the public, even with the aid of your machine, which I understand records accurately in every detail a sound such as this, you still have great problems and difficulties. I suppose it must all boil down to the personal experience until each individual has his or her own experience, coupled with evidence to satisfy them, in particular, no real progress is made. In a kind of way, progress is made, perhaps, interest is stimulated, of course, but it must still boil down to the individual approach and the individual experience. 
All you can do is open the door. Depends on the individual as to whether they will go through that door and discover for themselves what lies beyond it. But you do a very, very valuable and important work. And in that respect, we help you, of course, to the best of our ability. Of course, there's much that we would like to do, much more that we would like to achieve. But there are certain limits, no doubt. Certainly there must be limits of a kind. But I think it is amazing that you have achieved what you have achieved. And I know that you will continue to endeavor. But I still feel that the day has not yet dawned when the world will begin to see the clarity of vision that we all desire and hope for. That day is yet a long way ahead. But nevertheless, you are doing your part. Others are trying also in different ways. But we still feel that until we have given that conviction in a scientific way, to scientific minds, under scientific conditions, we shall not make the impact. Here and there we shall be able to provide the proof of survival, comfort many people, arouse a great deal of interest, but until we can have full cooperation in a scientific sense and way, between the scientists on this side of life and the scientists on yours, until scientific methods have been brought into being, which will happen, I'm sure, until this happens, we shall not convince the world. Of course, once we do that, once it has been scientifically accepted and approved and made known, when all the nations of the world are fully conscious and aware of the reality of this life after so-called death and the reality of communication when this truly comes to pass that all peoples accept and understand we cannot hope to achieve more than we do until this is brought fully into a scientific acceptance. This will come. This, I have no doubt, will come. Mediumship will still play an important part because the human element must always be there. We have great hopes of many things transpiring in the years that lie ahead. We feel it is the only salvation for the world. Indeed, we know it is the only salvation for the world. When man is aware and accepts full realization of life after death. When he realizes that as he sows in your world, so truly shall he reap in this, till man sees the error of his ways, until man is brought together in brotherhood and in love with a perfect realization an understanding that every act will, by the very nature of it, create a situation and condition not only in your world, but in this, particularly for those when they first come over, when they realize that the seed sown in your world will bear fruit in this world as well as in yours, when man sees the error of wrong thinking and wrong action, when he sees the reality and the beauty of spirit and aspires towards it, when he uplifts himself with the knowledge of spirit and the realization of the power of spirit, then changes will come in your world. We have great faith in him for this. My name is Sinclair Stopas. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Scientifically, no. It is not in my power to explain it. But of course, there are many levels of consciousness. Yes. And one level of consciousness is enabled by conditions which are peculiar to that particular aspect of life, able to transfer and transmit to some extent, with some success, to another conditional sphere of existence. Of course, entities do, from higher spheres, enter lower spheres, transmitting their message of love and hope, and giving information and spiritual guidance to those less fortunate. But all is of a mental nature. All life is, of course, mental. If it were not so, there could be no existence. Indeed, I would say that behind everything that happens, wherever there is existence, wherever there is consciousness, there is life, of course. But it is purely on a mental level. And as we think, truly we are. And so as we aspire and grow mentally, so we grow in spiritual stature and grace. But a man is no more than he thinks he is. In other words, he is no more than he has made himself by his thoughts, which of course lead to action. The whole point is that we are involved in a sense with so many different levels of consciousness, but we cannot reach a higher level until we have made it possible for ourselves. It all, of course, comes to the obvious state of being of mind, that as we think we are, and as we are, we act accordingly. But man can aspire and can open up his consciousness to a higher rate and to a higher condition of life and in consequence will be helped and guided by those more highly evolved. We do exactly the same when we come to you. We impress, we inspire, we try to give to you enlightenment and truth as we know it from the particular sphere or environment from which we come. We may be limited to a point by the conditions around and about you. And of course we are limited in the personal sense by the individual or individuals that we are trying to contact. If they have closed minds, we cannot reach them. The tragedy of your world is that its mind on mass is closed to spiritual things. It functions on a purely material basis. And since the whole world is more or less materially inclined, with no thought of the spirit and that which lies ahead for the morrow, while man clings to material thought and condition, it is difficult for us to reach him. But once a man opens his heart and his being to knowledge, opens his mind, then he can receive that inspiration that we can give. But so much depends on the individual. If only people will lift themselves a little higher so that we can reach them. There are many methods of communication. The mental method is a wonderful method which can achieve great things. Indeed, it is really fundamentally the highest form of communication, the process of mind over matter, the process of spiritual inspiration coming from outside, entering into your world, into the mind of the individual. That person can be so brought out of material things, to be so uplifted and so inspired that they can receive tremendous help and spiritual guidance which will transform themselves and their lives. And those around and about them too can be affected by the personal soul who has received inspiration and follows it out. But of course there are many methods of communication. The physical method, such as we use, when used properly on the highest possible level, is no doubt the greatest form of communication. But of course it's extremely rare. And when it is found, 
very often it is limited by the conditions around the medium himself and by the people of times who sit with that medium. Mediumship of this nature, what is termed physical phenomena, can be the highest possible level of communication, providing the conditions around the medium, and with the medium in particular, are put onto the highest possible level of consciousness. But unfortunately, this that is still to happen. Other mediumships evolve and come into being. We are looking for instruments all the time. And science, too, will play its part, as I've said. Scientific efforts will be made by certain inf individuals here and there in different parts of the world who will cooperate with mediums. And through the combination of scientific approach and high form of mediumship, we shall eventually bring into being a method of communication which will convince the world this is what we are aiming for. And we know this can and it will come to pass. But there are obstacles, many obstacles to overcome, many conditions to be changed. But here and there we shall find the right subjects. Here and there we shall find the scientifically minded who has spiritual desires. And we shall together emerge and bring forth out of all this a method of communication which will astound and astonish the world and bring conviction to it. All these things we are aiming for. We know the needs of the world are desperate and that is why we are working so hard in this direction of bringing about, as it were, a marriage between science in your world and also between those in this world of like mind who are aiming for the highest possible form of communication on that level whereby conviction can be brought to the world. And all those who doubt will find that truth that we've all desperately endeavored to present to you, brought forward in such a way that none can dispute it, none can doubt it, and all must accept it. And then when that comes to pass, the world in consequence, by the very nature of this evidence, will be changed. Governments will see and act accordingly and differently in harmony with the world of spirit. We are desirous of bringing this harmony and this peace that we know into your world, and it will and it shall come. Of this I have no doubt, though it may take many years yet, but we are on the right path. We are finding subjects, we are finding instruments, and here and there, Efforts are being made in many countries. And later on, not yet, but later on, you will find certain scientists will come out into the open and will make known their findings. These things will come to pass, but not yet. We are all striving for this on this side, for the betterment of your world, as knowledge and truth and light may be brought to it and there shall come a new way of thinking, a new way of life, and peace eventually can and shall descend upon the world of flesh. It is a great joy to speak to you. I must come and indeed will come again, but the power wanes. You were a famous medium when you were out. I was never a medium, not in the sense of a medium, but nevertheless I had a great, great knowledge and interest in the subject. I must go. Bless you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.